The insertions and origins of the muscles of the, uh, the shoulder girdle, also known as the pectoral girdle. Uh, we're talking about this up here. The clavicle, the scapula, they make the shoulder girdle. The upper limb hangs from it. So muscles that attach to it, stabilize it, move it, and that sort of thing. By insertion and origin, we mean the attachment sites of these muscles to the bone, the specific bony bits, which sometimes have specific names and sometimes don't. So we'll have a little run through the muscles, and then we'll look at the bony bits, and then we'll put the muscles on the bones, and then we're done. Maybe I'll try and remember to add the nerves as well. So, what are we interested in? Okay, we're gonna be interested in uh, trapezius. Take trapezius off, and you see rhomboid major, rhomboid minor. We did the rotator cuff muscles the other week, so we're not gonna do those. Um, oh, levator scapulae. Um, oh, and serratus anterior, pectoralis minor, and then under there, subclavius. I think that's it. Okay, so what bony bits do I think we're gonna be interested in? Got me stretchy skeleton today. Well, um, many of these muscles are linking the axial skeleton, the vertebrae, the skull, the ribs, to the pectoral girdle or the shoulder girdle. Um, on the skull, we have the external occipital protuberance here. Nice lumpy bit, suggests that we've got some nice muscles attaching there. There is a superior nuchal line here, which isn't super obvious on the this quality skeleton, but trust me that it's there. And then of course we have the vertebrae, which we number C1, C2, C3, and so on. And then when we get to the thorax, T1, T2, T3, and so on. And each vertebra has a spinous process in the midline, extending out posteriorly. Uh, on top of the spinous process is a supraspinous ligament, tying them all together. And then laterally, or transversely, we have the transverse processes out here. So the spinous processes and the transverse processes of the vertebrae, and we're gonna number the vertebrae by region. Um, with the scapula, uh, we see the spine of the scapula, and up here that becomes the acromion. Today we're gonna to be most interested in the medial margin of the scapula, the lateral margin of the scapula, the inferior angle, and the superior angle of the scapula up there. If we turn you around, in here, this is the coracoid process. You can actually palpate this on yourself if you get in there. Ooh, he's a bit sensitive. Um, but the coracoid process here is an anchor point for us today. The coracoid process of the scapula, I'll just point out the acromion and the, the acromioclavicular joint, just for fun. Um, and then we have the ribs. Again, ribs are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And the ribs have their costal cartilages as well uh, that we'll see here. I think those are the bony bits that we need. So do you see down here in the midline? This is the nuchal ligament. Your vertebrae do that, right? So they're filled in. There's a, there's a, a ligament in there tying them all together, which these muscles can then insert into or have origins from. So the, the nuchal ligament, and look, that external occipital protuberance is up here. That's our attachment point. Right, muscles. It's, well, let's start with trapezius. Origins and insertions, uh, by the origin of a muscle, we usually mean the attachment site of the muscle that doesn't move. And with insertion, we mean the end of the muscle that then moves something, moves the bone. Um, the origin tends to be more proximal. The insertion tends to be more distal. If you fix the bone at the other end though, the muscle can work in the opposite direction. So, you know, it's a little bit, um, but the origins then of trapezius, look at this, trapezius is a beautiful superficial muscle at the back, it gives many of the shapes that we see here, and you can see that its fibers are running in different directions, so the upper fibers run like this, the middle fibers run like this, and the lower fibers run like this. The origins are the nuchal ligament, 
uh, and the external occipital protuberance and the medial part of the superior nuchal line. And then down here, you can palpate that, that, that first lump you feel is C7. So trapezius also has origins on the spinous processes of the C7 to T12 vertebrae and that supraspinous ligament that's there. So the origin, very medial, can't get much more medial than that, right? Um, the insertion then are into the spine of the scapula, the acromion, you're gonna get me, aren't you? And the lateral third of the clavicle. So very much the uh, uh, superior parts of that pectoral girdle, the shoulder girdle. And in doing so then, the weight of the upper limb is suspended by the trapezius fibers, but the trapezius muscle can rotate the scapula. So what trapezius will do is the upper fibers will give upward rotation of the scapula. The lower fibers will give downward rotation of the scapula. The middle fibers will do retraction of the scapulae, pinching your shoulder blades together. Um, I've done a lot of videos on trapezius, I think. Basically, if you don't move your scapula and you abduct your upper limb, you can only go that far. You then need to rotate your scapula to be able to raise your arm above your head. Um, so that's what uh, trapezius is doing. These fibers here then of the neck and the head will also extend the neck and the head if you use both muscles on both sides. If you just use muscles on one side, they'll take part in you know, lateral flexion, lateral flexion of the head and the neck. Innovated by cranial nerve nine, the accessory nerve. And a little bit from some, the mo accessory nerve is the bit you need to know. If you take off trapezius, you see the rhomboids uh, running between the vertebrae and the scapula. We have rhomboid minor and rhomboid major. They look like a single muscle here, but rhomboid minor is the thinner strip superiorly and the rest is rhomboid major. The origins of rhomboid minor are the spinous processes of the C7 and T1 vertebrae, probably a bit of the nuchal ligament as well, probably also that supraspinous ligament. And then the insertion is into the medial border of the scapula. Rhomboid major then, uh, its origins are the T2 to T5 vertebrae spinous processes and the supraspinous ligament, and it inserts into the medial border of the scapula. The rhomboid muscles then, when they contract, they retract the scapulae, pinch your shoulder blades together. Um, but like all the muscles of the, uh, the scapulae, including trapezius actually, all these muscles also stabilize the scapula while you are waving your arms around, right? So those are the rhomboid muscles, uh, innovated by the dorsal scapula nerve. While we're here, if we just go up a little bit, this muscle here is the levator scapulae muscle. Guess what that does? Levator scapulae has its origins in the transverse processes of the C1 to C4 vertebrae up in there in the neck. And it inserts into the superior angle, that top angle of the scapula, um, and a little bit into that medial border there. Um, its job is to yeah, ele you know, elevate the scapula, elevate the shoulder girdle, stabilize the scapula. If it pulls, it can cause the scapula to rotate that away, depending upon what the other muscles are doing. So levator scapulae can also cause downward rotation of the scapula. So if you've raised your arms above your head, levator scapulae can help rotate the scapula back down again. Innovated by, uh, C3 and C4, spinal nerves and the dorsal scapular nerve. Given that it runs from the scapula to the neck, if the scapula is fixed, then it can also aid in extension of the neck, lateral flexion of the neck, you know, that sort of thing. Spin you around and we see this muscle here. We can see slips of muscle running from, well, Normally we'd say ribs three, four, and five. He seems to have a variant. Um, there's a slip from rib two here. So <laughs> origins and insertions. 
Um, the origins then would be ribs three, four, and five near the near the costochondral junction. So this is more medial uh, and kind of doesn't move. And the insertion is into the coracoid process of the scapula. So this then will draw the scapula inferiorly and medially. But again, this is another muscle that is helping stabilize the scapula while you do things with your upper limb or, uh, or move your scapula around. Innervated by the medial pectoral nerve. So ribs three, four, and five to the coracoid process of the scapula, pectoralis minor. If we look even more closely, there's a muscle under here. This is the clavicle. This muscle is under the clavicle, inferior to the clavicle. This is subclavius. Now subclavius is actually running from the first rib and often the, uh, the cartilage of the first rib as well, the costal cartilage of the first rib. And then it's running to the inferior surface of the clavicle out here. So it's stabilizing the clavicle. So again, a small muscle, but also adding to, adding to that stabilizing function of the shoulder girdle. Um, and there is a, it does insert into a bit of a groove there, like a subclavian groove. Um, and it can pull the clavicle, you know, inferiorly. Um, we can see some really important structures here. Look, there's the brachial plexus, subclavian artery, subclavian vein. Um, so the subclavius muscles, probably most important function is that when you fracture your clavicle, a very commonly fractured long bone, I fractured mine, it, it, it stops the clavicle from being too much trouble. It stops the clavicle from going in and and the sharp ends of bone doing damage to your brachial plexus and uh, arteries and veins, which is why a fracture of the clavicle doesn't cause as much trouble as you might think it would, looking at the anatomy here right now. It is innervated by its own nerve, the subclavian nerve. Um, one more muscle to do down here. This is serratus anterior. Um, serratus anterior. Its origins are typically ribs one to eight. What have you got? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> nine, yeah, if you're lucky. Um, also rib nine. So the origins are ribs one to nine. So we have these individual slips of muscle. I think, I think the first rib might actually have two slips. And then this comes around the lateral thorax and inserts into the medial border of the, uh, the scapula, and in fact, the, uh, the deep surface of the medial border of the scapula. This is the boxes muscle, because what it does is it pulls the scapula around the body wall anteriorly. Can you imagine if this muscle gets shorter, pulls the scapula around that away. Look at it, it's a great big muscle. So it's called the boxes muscle because it lets you reach further forward. So when you're throwing a punch, it drives um, the punch forwards. Um, it also stabilizes the scapula, like the other muscles of the scapula. And because it's pulling on this end of the scapula, it can also pull the scapula so that it rotates, so that it also aids with that upwards rotation. So if you have trapezius pulling on this end, serratus anterior pulling on this end, you point your glenoid fossa up and you put your arms in the air. So serratus anterior stabilizes the scapula, aids with upward rotation of the scapula and protracts the scapula, meaning it brings it anteriorly around the rib cage. It is innervated infamously by the long thoracic nerve because if the long thoracic nerve gets injured, you lose innervation to serratus anterior and you lose some control of your scapula in certain positions and it causes winging of the scapula. Serratus anterior, lovely. <laughs> Serratus anterior then is a good example of that insertion origin thing in that we think of serratus anterior most of the time as moving the scapula. So the origins are the ribs, because the ribs don't move, where would the ribs go? Uh, the insertion is the scapula because that moves. But if you, fix your, if you fix your upper limb, you can then use serratus anterior to lift your ribs upwards. So it's an accessory muscle of inspiration. So in that sense, this end isn't moving because you hold on to something and you fix your scapula 
and then you contract the radius anterior and you move your ribs. So it's all a matter of perspectives really, isn't it? But there we go, those are the muscles of the shoulder girdle, the muscles of the pectoral girdle, trapezius, the rhomboids, levator scapulae, pectoralis minor, subclavius, and serratus anterior. Their origins, their insertions, and if I've remembered all the way around, their innovation. All right. It's, it's I, mm, nice, nice, interesting anatomy. I like, I like this. I like shoulders, but that's because I'm a rock climber. Okay, hopefully, hopefully you find it interesting too, um, and we'll continue this in the future as we work this way, I guess. See you next time.